Hey, happy holidays, everyone. There's an uh, assumption that has ridden along with this entire effort to create a stadium for the Oakland Raiders and the San Diego Chargers and Carson and take the Raiders out of Oakland. And it is that the Raiders, and here I'm focusing only on the Oakland Raiders, will be of a higher franchise value in Carson than they would in Oakland. That's not true, and here's why. First of all, I'm using the stadium plan that I'm most familiar with, which is the one that I created at the behest of Oakland Raiders owner Mark Davis and many of you are familiar with, and calls for industrial development revenue bonds. But without going into the detail of that, let's just look at the strict, basic logic of the comp comparing the situations. First of all, the Raiders are currently valued at an estimated $1.45 billion, according to Forbes, which has become the accepted standard for estimating or at least discussing what the value of a sports franchise is. The Cowboys are the gold standard for the NFL at $4 billion, and indeed that's true for sports right now. The Raiders right now, again, are at $1.45 billion in the current situation in Oakland. However, the Raiders do not own the Oakland Alameda County Col Coliseum Stadium at all. And because their revenue is based on an agreement, a lease agreement that's basically year to year, you can't say, well, they're going to get X number of dollars over Y period beyond one year. And that lease term is almost up. So if, if you take the baseline Raiders situation, and let's say they go to Carson, then they go into a stadium they're sharing with the San Diego Chargers, which means they own half of the stadium. That stadium is valued at an estimated $1.7 billion, which means the Raiders' share down there will be at baseline $850 million, right? So Mark Davis has said he wants a stadium in Oakland at $900 million. Forget the whole matter about the $400 million in the gap. That doesn't apply in the case of the plan that I developed anyway because I figured out a solution to that long, a long time ago. If you take that 900 million and then the 1010 room hotel, the way I developed the plan, the hotel developer would share ownership with the Raiders. So the Raiders would have 50% ownership. That's $80 million. So that's 980 million. If you take that 980 million and you add it to the $1.45 billion baseline, okay, baseline, you get. One, excuse me, $2.43 billion approximately in value. $2.43 billion. Now, in the situation that I have created in my plan, over a 40 year lease period, the Raiders would gain $2.8 billion, over $2.8 billion in total revenue, which comes to about $69 million annually. If you add that to the other totals, it comes to approximately $3.14 billion, $3 billion. Now, some of you logically would say, quite rightly, that there's a, a bit of a double counting there because you're talking about replacing some revenues gotten from a stadium with others. But there's a huge difference. First of all, the $69 million annual revenue for the Raiders in the new Oakland private stadium situation comes from a base that includes 300 luxury boxes that includes a large scale complex of retail within it and so on. But the big difference are the luxury boxes and also the naming rights revenue. Right now, the current naming rights situation in Oakland is so minuscule. This is how bad it is, folks. 
on Emmy Wright's deal, clocks in, clocked in at about what, $10 million total, just, just around that. Adjusted for inflation, our last negotiated Amy Wright's deal with OCO, O.co, excuse me, was actually less than the previous Amy Wright's deal. Are you listening to me? Under a new stadium scenario, building a stadium that can host a Super Bowl, we can get, and indeed should get, a lot more. We should really realize a $200 million Amy Wright's situation at the least. Although the amount that I used was $100 million, a lot less, and I deliberately downgraded a lot of the revenues in my calculations. Even with that, the Raiders come out in my plan as valued at $3 billion. By contrast to Carson, I can't push them over $2.5 billion. I just can't. You would have to pump up the numbers for PSLs, and I might add, and for seat licenses, excuse me, seat licenses are PSLs, but I meant luxury suites. And there's a fewer number of luxury suites, and even though they're more expensive, I didn't put in a larger expense in my calculation. I rested with what I felt the market would bear under the old stadium, not under the novelty of a new stadium. So there's another gap right there. The bottom line is I could take my Oakland figures, bump them up, and get to $3.5 billion or $3.6 billion. That's substantial. That's quite substantial. That's almost Dallas Cowboys territory. Almost, but not quite. The point that I'm making is anyone who tells you the Raiders will absolutely be worth more in Carson than in Oakland has no idea what they're talking about and they have not ran the numbers. Don't believe them. The Raiders are actually worth more if they stay in Oakland and have their own privately financed stadium. That's the big difference. In Oakland, they wouldn't be sharing the stadium with anyone. It would be their own. Carson, they're sharing it with the Chargers. I'm sure the Raiders know that. But now you do too. Or at least you have some ammunition to use, more ammunition to use, forming an intellectual argument regarding why the Raiders should stay in Oakland.